Our most important climatologist, Jim Hansen, had his team at NASA do a study to figure out how much carbon in the atmosphere was too much. The paper they published, maybe the most important scientific paper of the millennia to date, said we now know enough to know how much is too much. Any value for carbon in the atmosphere greater than 350 parts per million is not compatible with the planet on which civilization developed and to which life on Earth is adapted. That's pretty strong language for scientists to use. Stronger still if you know that outside today, the atmosphere is 395 parts per million CO2 and rising about two parts per million per year. Everything frozen on Earth is melting. The great ice sheet of the Arctic is reduced by more than half. The oceans are about 30% more acidic than they were 30 years ago because the chemistry of seawater changes as it absorbs carbon from the atmosphere. And because warm air holds more water vapor than cold, the atmosphere is about 5% wetter than it was 40 years ago. That's astonishingly large change. There's more energy coming in and being absorbed by the Earth than there is heat being radiated to space, which is exactly what we expected, because as we add greenhouse gases to the atmosphere, it traps heat. Now we can measure that, and that's the basis by which we can prove that the human-made impacts on atmospheric composition are the primary cause of the climate change that we're observing. So let's get to work. We're calling this Do the Math, and we're going to do some math for a moment. Just three numbers, OK? I wrote about them in a piece last summer for Rolling Stone, uh, a piece that went oddly viral. It was, the, it was the issue with Justin Bieber on the cover, OK? Um, but here's the strange thing. The next day, uh, I got a call from the editor saying, your piece has gotten 10 times more likes on Facebook than Justin Bieber's, you know? <laughs> some, of that, some of that is doubtless the result of my sort of soulful stare, you know? But, <laughs> but mostly it's because we managed to just kind of lay out this math in a very straightforward way that people needed to understand as we were going through what turned out to be the hottest year that America has ever experienced. Before we get to those three numbers, here's where we are so far. We've burned enough coal and gas and oil to raise the temperature of the Earth one degree. What has that done? There was a day last September when the headline in the paper was, half the polar ice cap is missing. Literally. I mean, if Neil Armstrong were up on the moon today, he would look down and see half as much area of ice in the Arctic. We've taken one of the largest physical features on Earth, and we have broken it. Shall we work through the numbers? They're three, and they're easy. The first one's two degrees. That's how much the world has said it would be safe to let the planet warm. In political terms, it's the only thing that anybody's agreed to. Some of you may remember that climate summit in Copenhagen. There was only one number in the final two-page voluntary accord that people signed. Only one number in it, two degrees. Every signatory pledged to make sure the temperature wouldn't rise above that. The EU, Japan, Russia, China, countries that make their money selling oil like the United Arab Emirates, the most conservative, recalcitrant, reluctant countries on Earth, even the United States. If the world officially believes anything about climate change, it's that two degrees is too much. Second number, scientists have calculated how much carbon we could pour into the atmosphere and have a reasonable chance of staying below two degrees. They say about 565 more gigatons. A gigaton is a billion tons. That's not a perfect chance. It's worse odds than Russian roulette, you know. It sounds like it should be a lot. It is a lot. 565 billion tons of CO2. The problem is we pour 30 billion tons a year in now, and it goes up 3% a year. Do the math, and it's about 15 years before we go past that threshold. So that's sobering news. But the scary number is the third number. The third number was the important one and the new one. And it came from a team of financial analysts in the United Kingdom. 
And what they did was sit down with all the annual reports and SEC filings and things and figure out how much carbon the world's fossil fuel industry, how much they had already in their reserves. And that number turned out to be 2,795 gigatons worth of carbon, five times as much as the most conservative governments on Earth think would be safe to pour into the atmosphere. Uh, it's not even close. I mean, it's uh, you know, five times more. And once you know that number, then you understand the essence of this problem.